All right, welcome to a special episode from The Chart Reader. So if you've watched my videos, you know my bread and butter is short-term technical analysis. I'll look at the daily, I'll look at the weekly, I'll have an idea of what the next couple days, the next couple weeks will do, and you know, I'll trade accordingly, right? What we're gonna do today is do a long-term view to make a 2023 prediction, okay? It's a little harder for me to make long-term predictions because I'll be honest with you, I don't have the patience to really wait a full month for the next candle. I do not have the patience to wait three months for the next quarterly to, to close, right? And you can expect me not to have a patience for a full year to close, right? So that's really why I like my little short terms, right? It gives me a little ability to be a gambler, knock on wood, it's safe and I'm not betting mortgage or anything like that, right? But. Um, I have fun with it, right? If you are a person that wants to do long-term trading, you really can use technical analysis. And this single video should also show you how to do that, right? Obviously, the same things we do for these major market indices is the same thing you can do for any, from penny stock to major blue chip, right? So use the same things and, and you can make your long-term predictions too. Last thing, look, you know I'm very open to just different opinions, right? And like I said, I'm a little better at short-term than long-term. So if you disagree with anything, please throw it in the chat, right? If you're right and I'm wrong, let me know, maybe save me a little money, right? So um, we're here to help each other, right? All that said, what are we gonna do today? A little differently, but I kinda talked about it, right? We're gonna actually look at the monthly, the quarterly, and the yearly across the majors is what we're gonna do. So we are not gonna look at the daily, we are not gonna look at the weekly at all. We still have our same moving averages. We obviously have these lines here, but the lines are a little more short-term than long-term. So I'm not gonna reference too, too many lines. Obviously our death lines will matter, right? So. Um, with that, still same lines, and then again, same MACD, RSI, and volume. Nothing's really changing except the view, and then just remembering you have to wait a longer time for the next candle to unfold, okay? So we're looking at the NASDAQ, and we're starting on the monthly, okay? So what's happening, all right? First things first, you could see it. We actually lost the eight moving average pretty much at the beginning of the year, okay? Once we hit April, we lost the 20, right? And once we lost the 20, what happened? We made our way down to the 50, right? It's, it's the same thing that happens on the daily and the weekly, happens on the monthly. The problem is months of this means a lot of pain on the weekly and a lot of pain on the daily. And let's be honest, we've seen that, right? I think, knock on wood, this is obviously not financial advice, but if you use these videos, we were able to make some pretty good money on those two. I know from October till roughly November, I was bullish, you know that, right? And then I quickly kind of started worrying. I wouldn't necessarily say immediately, right? But I would at least say, bef well before it got real, real bad, we definitely started turning a little pessimistic, right? So there are opportunities to still find the greens even when you do short term. But let's be honest, if you came to the monthly, you believe my don't touch anything that's under the eight, you literally could have pulled everything out in 2020 and saved yourself from, from a pretty big drop, right? Because we've seen it. If this thing loses 8% this month, our individual stocks probably lost around 16. You can almost say at least double, if not more, right? So um, yeah, all that said, what are we looking at at the monthly, right? Actually a lot of worrisome, because like I said, we lost the eight, we lost the 20, we came to the 50, we made a bounce, we couldn't quite get over it, and now we lost not only the eight we were trying to bounce from, but we actually lost the 50, right? What ultimately happens next is we might be coming down to this two, this 100 line, right? And if that's lost, that'll be coming here, right? By no means am I gonna talk about us coming down there yet, but yeah, right now it kinda seems likely, right? And I've mentioned this 8,000 number on the last couple videos. Um, what am I expecting next month? Look, one of a couple things. We might come back up here. Because look, the 50 is 11, right? And we've seen on a number of stocks where it'll come to a line, come up, come down, and then kind of come back and basically go a little horizontal, right? We might see some horizontal and it come up to 11, 
all right, by the end of the next month. But again, we're gonna go even more long-term, right? So just this, this first month doesn't matter. But what I don't like also is we actually went below that candle too, right? Again, my lines down here are more daily, but the fact that we lost this green, this single month took away both of these. And from there, it just kind of makes me believe we're coming down to here. So the monthly already has me worried. Look, definitely in the negative on the MACD, by no means does it look like the green is trying to turn back either. It seems like this green is ready to keep going down and the red's not quite ready to catch up. It looks like the RSI is about to get worse. I'm seeing a, a, a come down. And really the, the red line has been in a pretty hard slope. It's kind of slowed a little bit, but I'm still seeing a slope down. And then obviously, um, over the last five, there's only been two months of buying, right? And even beyond the five, there's only been a couple from there, right? So um, monthly has me worried, okay? Coming into the quarterly, okay? So this is a really important quarterly, right? Because just going back to the monthly real quick, we saw what happened when we lost the 20 and we see that we were actually on the 20 for about three candles before it like ultimately dropped, right? Where are we on the quarterly? We've now come to this for about one or two, right? So this is nothing but red. Hey, if we can get a green, maybe we'll actually get a good gap fill and go up. This doesn't seem very good, but hey, this is still really, really positive. This is in the positive thousand, right? So um, interesting, okay. Our RSI is super high, right? So obviously when I say we're in the high 70s, high 80s, that's kind of where I say get ready for a cool down. It does kind of seem like we've cooled down a bit to the 70, right? And the fact that we're on the 20, again, this 20 is either gonna be a place we bounce up or it's gonna be a place we violently drop. And I actually don't like the fact that the 50 here is roughly speaking, I gotta zoom out here, in between these two, the 50 is roughly right here at the 6,000, right? So that, again, I don't wanna say that we're coming this, this low, it's still a lot that needs to happen. But the quarterly makes it seem like 6,000 could actually be reasonable, right? So again, has me a little worried. But right now, right now, by the time we get to March, the end of March, we must, we must be over 10.4. I do not want to look and see the next quarter under the 20. Because sincerely, if, if that happens, that has me really, really worried. It does. And look, over the last, the number of quarters, right? Literally the last year, right? Four quarters is a year. But nothing but selling, nothing but over volume selling as well. Um, yeah, I wish this was curving up a little more, honestly. Um, and again, kind of the same thing I said on the last one, maybe we'll just kind of stay horizontal on both the 20 and really this death line right here. But yeah, this also does scream come down. And honestly, I think roughly, honestly, I think this is a good line. This 8,900 on the quarterly will roughly put us around 50% of this big candle and pretty much right on, let's, at least what I try to draw it on. I don't know if it's to the penny exact, but the top of this one, right? I actually really think 89 seems a little more realistic. But again, the 20, we've seen it. The 20 could be the place where we bounce up or like the monthly was, the 20 is gonna, could be the place that violently drops us once we lose it, right? So um, yeah, I'm still kind of leaning negative right here. Excuse me. I guess I at least like the fact that we haven't had a death cross. So the eight is still at least over the 20, right? There is still a chance that these two lines become a channel and we actually maybe even bounce as high as 13. I think I've given too many pessimistic. So let's at least give one positive. Because again, if this bounces up, this is a bunch of red and that's a bunch of green. So that should be a pretty nice fill as well. So 13 seems realistic. Again, a lot of it starts at not losing 10-4. We cannot lose the 20. From there, if we can regain the death line, the 10-8, that'd be beautiful. And hey, this could be a nice fill at least back up to the eight. I'll say it, do I think we're gonna get over the eight on the quarterly? I, I don't. 
I, I don't, right? But that would be a real nice pop because I think that's about a 30%, right? If we go from 10 to 13, give or take, right? So um, yeah, that that is an interesting positive spin on it as well. Last thing I'm gonna look at is the yearly. Where are we on the yearly? Okay, so the yearly has been really nice, right? Obviously, and look, we've said it a number of times, the markets always win. Look at this, right? Nothing but trading over the eight, it's a beautiful thing. We're still actually not under the eight moving average, right? So that is good on the yearly. I really don't like the fact though that this full candle, again, this candle is finished. When we start the next trading candle, we're gonna start somewhere else, right? I don't know if it's gonna gap up on Tuesday, gap down on Tuesday, whatever, right? Um, I'm looking long-term, it's hard to tell what Tuesday is gonna be on a yearly chart. But I do not like that this candle completely took this one, right? And it pretty much took 50% of this one. I don't like that, right? But zooming out, there's a really, okay, so what year is this? Okay, since 2003, all right, that's when this is, because this is 2005, 2010 onward. Since 2003, there's only been one red candle and then green. One red candle and then green. One red candle. Is it gonna be green? Is it gonna keep this pattern? That's a really interesting pattern right there. Look, if you go to the roulette table and you use the little past history to make your bets, they call that dumb gambling because the wheel doesn't know, the ball doesn't know. Technical analysis knows. So I don't want you to think this is like roulette and it's silly to see and think it'll happen again. It is actually a really important thing to look at, all right? Um, I j and look, this one, actually took a number of candles, not just one, and still delivered, and lost the eight, right? And it still delivered good yearly behind it. So that is a really interesting thing, just, just looking at that. Again, though, this RSI was in the 90s, right? What are we looking at? 91 as of last month, okay? It's now dropped to 72, right? That's this number right here. Does it need to drop one more time to the 50s, right? I, I you know, I think this, this only one red candle thing is real interesting to me. And look, really over the time, it's there's only been one moment where it's happened and it's been a couple, right? So, um, man, are we gonna follow the one, two, three, four, five out of six history? What's the seventh one gonna do? Again, I think I'm still a little pessimistic. Like that's a lot of, that's a big red volume candle right there, right? I'm, I'm glad at least volume didn't drop down here like we see with other stocks, right? Like this isn't a pump and dump. This is the major markets, right? But um, yeah, overall, ah oh man, just looking at the yearly. Again, a couple things, look, this 89 number just keeps coming. Cause look, if it's gonna drop, it might drop to the eight and then bounce back up, right? And that comes to 89. This 89 number has come up a bunch of times and I think it's a safe number to go negative. I think again, this 13 number is also a little realistic because look, I think that there's a chance we'll come up. I don't think we'll come back to the golden lines of trading, but this seems like it would be a really legitimate stop point. And again, it's roughly 50% of this big red one. So I think 13, is a good potential, and I also think 9,000 is a good potential. Overall, I'll say at least, there seems to be more upside than downside, but you know, nothing is screaming good, right? And one more time, we've at least seen it where it's been a really bad candle and you know, still holds this only one red on the yearly, but we've also seen it where, you know, it'll, it'll give you a couple years in a row of bad, right? So. Um, I obviously was not trading in this. I have no idea what happened in this early 2000 kind of move, right? I remember 2008, I remember 2012, um, right? But um, yeah, let's see what happens here. Again, those are, those are my numbers. I think 89 or 13, I think I'm leaning more towards 89, basically this 9,000 number. But again, like I said, if you disagree, let me know and we're pretty much gonna do the exact same thing for the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones.